And on social media, your name comes up. So basically, I started acting. I was in elementary school, 12 years old. I was grateful every day that I was on set. Every day on set is a good day, man. <laughs> There's a certain energy that you kind of just want to be around them. Uh, we can talk about that in a second. Um, I'm not a sports guy. I don't even know how football is played. Despite the fact that I left the show for my own reasons, and we can talk about that if you'd like. So tell me, like, what's next for you? Welcome. Welcome to another episode of The Grass is Greener. I'm your host, Paul Green, and my guest today is Jessica Lowndes. Jessica and I did a movie called I'm Glad It's Christmas, and we wanted just to share a little bit about what that movie is, and, and also I wanted you to discover a little bit more of the background of who Jessica is. And she's a writer, a singer, she's directing, she is uh, has producing, She's she's had her songs placed in over 21 soundtracks. You probably know her from Beverly Hills 90210, where she went on as a guest star and ended up doing 114 episodes. We get into that story, which is a lot of you will really dig that. And then just her journey to L.A., and how the music and the act, music and acting sort of came together and brought her to this point. So uh, our today's Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving. This movie, uh, 2022, is out tomorrow. No, the 26th. Uh, so two days from now, uh, and it's on the GAF, which is the Great American Family. You can get the app GAC, uh, which is Great American Community, but it's also on Hulu. I think it's the Hulu at the same time, from what, uh, and then you just gotta check your local time for when it's on. But you can go to my website, paulgreen.com, uh, to discover all things under acting. You'll see uh, all the news about this movie. So um, please check out my sponsors in the description below. They help support this podcast, and there's their products I like and, and love and use. So please have a peek a boo there. So happy Thanksgiving to you, and remember, on on Thanksgiving that the things that you're grateful for grow and so it's just a nice reminder uh, to focus on what you have and what and the good stuff rather than what's missing because whatever you focus on that grows so just a friendly reminder from uh, me to you on Thanksgiving so happy Thanksgiving enjoy well, everybody, I am sitting here with Jessica Lowndes. Um, you know, on one of your trivia online, it says that do people pronounce your last name wrong a lot? All the time. Yeah. What did they say? Lowndes? Lowndes is a big one. Yeah. Loans. I don't know. The D confuses people, <laughs> but it rhymes with pounds. So Jessica Lowndes. Jessica. And then, <laughs> rhymes with pounds, you know, and it's a whole area of London. There's Lowndes Square, Lowndes Lodge, Lowndes oh. Court. Yeah. Is that what you were named after is Lounge Square and Lounge Lodge? Yeah, maybe that's yeah, maybe that's where it comes from. I gotta dig deep. I should go on ancestry.com and yeah, I haven't really I've dove into my mom's side of the family recently, but I actually haven't gone into the I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I kinda now I kind of just want to talk about that. But first, okay, Jessica Lounge is an actress or an actor, however it is the politically correct way. She writes. Uh, she sings, <laughs> she dances, uh, she is directing and, and she's a ancestral researcher. I can't wait to tell you for, I really want you to share a little bit about this story on your mom's side, because that blew me away. But Jessica <laughs> and I just finished doing a movie in, in, uh, in Sudbury to be, to be fair. And, uh, oh, did you see, did you see, to be fair, did you see that Peter Patter made it in? I did see that. Yes. Yeah, I love all your letter Kenny little, little, <laughs> little yeah. Easter eggs throughout the movie. Anybody who knows Letter Kenny and knows uh uh in Sudbury, people are gonna like appreciate uh he actually wrote me back. So I went to set and met, you know, when we were there, Jessica and I were working 80 hour weeks, six day weeks, uh Crazy. on on a film That's called that. I'm Glad It's Christmas with 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 Gladys Knight. And 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 we were in in Sudbury, so uh, one of my favorite TV shows is filmed there. It's very crass and people are going to judge me that it's my favorite, but it's one of my favorite c comedy, like the way they edit and the way that it's styled. And it's just, I think it's genius. And he wrote me, I went there, he just had a baby and I shared like my swaddling thing with him. And I shared uh Coulter wall with him. And I shared the set that I did at that bar in, in Sudbury. 
And he, you know, a month later wrote me back and he had watched my whole set at the, at the townhouse where right next to where we had That's cocktails amazing. at the time. Yeah. And, um, and I'm going to write him now and just be like, just so you know, uh, Pitter Patter made it, <laughs> made, made it, it into the film. <laughs> yeah you might want writing writing credit i don't know <laughs> i know i know that yeah. was funny but the the uh the candy cane where we had you you took my candy cane that didn't make it and yeah, shoot. and neither did the whole santa like that There's a whole scene yeah where you were santa and the, the most adorable kid on planet earth was sitting on your lap he his scene didn't make it but he's incredible maybe there'll be Maybe there'll be an extended version somewhere, you know? He's his family, he's gonna be so sad. I mean, his parents probably more than him. He's probably playing video games, but his his mom... <laughs> No, but there's gotta be. There, like, you know, there's different versions floating around. You know, you have the one that's cut down for TV, there's the one for streaming. So maybe it's in the streaming version. We don't know. That's right, because people don't know this, but it comes out on GAF, but it's also on Hulu, I think simultaneously. I'm not sure. It might be. Yeah, same day, Saturday. Same day. How cool. Okay. Weekend. I'm so excited. We have yeah, so much to talk about. Like, where do we even want to begin? I know. Well, I don't even know. We start from no. like how we know each other. Yeah. I like, I like that. Let's start there. So we where did where did we first meet? <laughs> We first met uh, on a Hallmark Christmas sing-along and we sang Drummer Boy together. And that was in 2019, right before the world shut down, right before the pandemic. We didn't know <laughs> what was about to happen. Um, and we didn't spend a ton of time, but I remember meeting you and being obsessed with your voice and thinking you're just an amazing human. And then when this came around and I saw that you were involved, I was just beyond excited. And then from day one, we never stopped singing. We were singing well, on set, in between takes, in the scene. True. We were singing and laughing. I think we sang and laughed from the minute that we got like in the dressing room or in the makeup in the morning. Yeah. That, that show we did um, was was so, you your voice was amazing. And you felt, it seemed like you felt at home. I was so uncomfortable. <laughs> I like, didn't feel at home. <laughs> it was like, I was acting like I felt at home. Oh Wasn't I felt yeah. at home for the holidays? Yeah. I was acting like I was at home, but I was oh. not at home either. It was You're very right, awkward. The was... setup was bizarre. Okay, I'm going to share a link in this podcast actually because my one of one of my fans found that the the a way that they can watch it, and I'm going to link it to this just because just look at how uncomfortable I am. Like, um, <laughs> I, you look you look like you're at home, well, at Lacey's home, and and I'm like. I'm like, help me, Jesus. Like, where am I? Well, I think what made it hard was, I mean, it turned out really cute. But I think filming it, you had everyone sitting behind you watching. And then you don't know if you should look in the camera or look towards them. But but it, it, it's where we met. And it was where- it was fun. And then cut to Sudbury, Ontario. And well, I have a text from that day that's like, we should do a movie together. And I, my fir- my last text to you, and then my between it was three years or whatever that was, was yeah. hey we we should do a movie to, together. And mm-hmm. then there we there we are in North Canada uh, doing a movie with Gladys Knight, which is just and with music. I think that was a huge thing too because I usually like if we did a film together, there wouldn't be such a huge musical component, but this was perfect for us. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure the crew loved it too because during setups we were learning some different song on the guitar well, well you kept teaching me these songs that are like so t- here's how it goes so i know all the like kind of old school i guess i'm the old man in the room but i know all <laughs> i know all the like like 70s rock and i'm like let's harmonize you are my sunshine and then you're you're teaching me i mean i can't even remember some Tom of the Mendes. things <laughs> which is the one what's Tom the one called? True. was it Shawn Mendes. Oh, no. yeah Shawn Mendes. but yeah. then there was that other one that was like r&b and it was so tricky. What was that one? Oh, oh, what was that one? It was really cool, we, though. It was cool. Well, we had the Rihanna stay, but that was you. That was, you did that, that, was one. Um, that was fun. Oh, that's the other one. We never really, we never put it out there because we never really <laughs> nailed it. Nothing was quite like the Kate Bush one. The running up the hill. <laughs> yeah, I have a hill. I have a problem where I'm just I'm, well, we're both very expressive, but I'm a hand talker. But I'm also like I'm use my head quite a bit. So when I'm singing and you're playing the guitar to keep the beat, I'm 
doing this. And then I watch the video back and I'm like, I can't. <laughs> but but in, in the ball. in the Kate Bush original uh, music video, she does do a pretty dramatic head bob. And I sent you that. I'm like, look at this. You weren't that yes. far off. I wasn't far off. Maybe, yeah. maybe it does research us. Maybe we do put it out eventually. We, we have should. this like, little hidden gem on our phone. There's, there's, right. there's yours. There's this, you're, you're amazing in it. I was trying to find the harmonies and it was like, all right, running up that hill, <laughs> looking for that ability. I was, I was stuck, I think in the TikTok version where the guy just, just hit his, anyway, we had fun. We, we had a blast. I think one of my highlights too was one of our last weekends in Sudbury, you had a show and I joined for a couple of songs and yes. <laughs> after a glass of wine or two, you know, just got up there and ad libbed and and it was so fun and so impromptu. But that was that was also a huge highlight for me. That fun. was a highlight for me too. And then you, I played you the Chris Stapleton version of "You Are My Sun Sun Sunshine." You are my sunshine, <laughs> and we, I think we sang it for your sister. But then what afterwards, I realized that I did. I just, we, I tried to sing with you rather than like, let you sing and me harmonize. Cause we were so excited to sing this song for your sister, but yeah. it's, uh, that live actually turned out really cool. You coming in and work. Trying and her to birthday, out, like, so we did like a whole, yeah. yeah. FaceTiming her in was just really cute. That was really special. And of course, Scott, our driver, we had such a good time, uh, meeting Scott who is it? I, we call him our driver, but he's like more like our bodyguard. And he's uh, our friend, he's an ex cop and he's yeah. just. He's just lovely. We need to plan our little reunion with him. He's just. I, I he's think gonna... so too. Well, maybe there's a, another movie we get to do. And I loved Sudbury. Like I, I got to know some of the, like I really ex explored, I think, you know, when you have a rental car, you, you, and I don't know how we had no days off. I don't know how I played all those shows. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You were doing concerts. You were going to the care centers. <laughs> like, yeah. You were all over. And then I think it's also really cool because Sudbury has the most, unique names for restaurants and that's one of the things that we bonded over right when we got there we were asking everyone for a list of places to go and one was called respect is burning which at first we thought who names a restaurant respect is burning this is yep. ridiculous but it was the best restaurant in town the best unbelievable best service best yeah. italian fast they were open late they had open late that's wine and just my favorite such a Good experience. Yeah. So, and then now we know it is just respect, you know, we dropped the is burning, but yeah. if you ever go to Sudbury, respect is burning. That's where it's at. Yeah. 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 It's, it's quite something to make movies in the North. Cause I'm a Northern person. Like I'm from Northern Alberta okay. and I, I didn't expect it, but I felt so at home there. Like, I just felt yeah. like these are kind of my, my people. Like I don't pre present as working class, but I did grow up in that. Right. Well, like. Yeah. Until, until I was 16, I worked my, my tail off and then, and then happened to shift careers where people like bring me bottled water and stuff yeah. like hey, Mr. Green, would you like a, it shifted. And I was like, I didn't know what to do with my hands at first when I first shifted into the, the business. But yeah. speaking of that, how did you actually get started, started, started? So before we continue, you are, I just really want to dive into this because you, you're not a triple threat you're a penta threat. So you're, you, you produce, when I look at your IMDB, you've produced 21 projects. Is that including some of your music videos? Is that why? Yeah. There's some music stuff in there too. And, and I mean, that's a lot of production and also writ as a writer, you have two uh, of these rom-coms that you've uh, have written and also you have seven produced 20 soundtrack. That's where I got Yeah. So your, your music has been in 20 soundtracks. Mm-hmm. I try and add music into everything that I do. Yeah. And I've been doing that since 90210. So I was hired as a singer. And then any excuse I could get to try and put a song in a scene, or even if my character was screwed up on drugs, which she was quite a bit of the time, I would be like, oh, could she just be like over there on drugs but singing? And they would go for it, which was awesome. <laughs> um, and then when I started doing these Hallmark movies, like even if my character wasn't a singer, I'd be like, I think she should sing in this scene. I love and that. so that's been really, really fun. So I've always, I've done music for shows and movies and different characters, but I'd never done my own album before. Mm -hmm. And during the pandemic, when the world shut down, I, I just thought this was the perfect time to do it. I was feeling very inspired and I knew this time was what we made of it. And I just, I had all this extra time and I just reached out to different friends of mine that also had time 
that I had written with over the past and, and produced music with in LA. And what was so cool is we started just writing, not knowing it was going to be an album and turn into Elemental and what it was. But at one point, we had different producers and writers from LA and Copenhagen and London, and I was in Vancouver. And it was such an international team effort all through Zoom. And that's the power of of all of this is like you can create from anywhere. And I recorded most of my album in my closet or in my producer's bedroom. <laughs> and this was a childhood bedroom. So yeah, it um it was it was so cool. And so I was just feeling really, really inspired. We kept writing and recording and a lot of it has sounds that remind me of Vancouver. And I was very inspired by nature. So there's a lot of cinematic sounds and synths and tribal drums and it just feels it just reminds me of home and it's emotional. And when I was listening to all the songs, this story started to form in my head and it was also mirroring what I was going through in my life. And I thought it would be really cool to do something to showcase myself as a director, but have it tie in with my music. So I wrote a 30 minute short film, but it's seven music videos and it's a cohesive story that that is tied to the elements. So each video is a different element. And within the element, I'm trying to escape a natural disaster, which is a metaphor. But um, I leave it up to the viewer to decide if it's actually happening or if it's in my subconscious that I'm in the wrong place. That's. I think that's maybe one thing people don't realize about you is how how creative you are because your 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 creativity goes in different layers. So you'd be sharing something with me about the song. But then the way you would describe to me, you know, the the video behind it, and then and then the story of like how the la the layers of your creativity and just the amount of enjoyment, it it feels to me like you have an an endless amount of energy when it comes to creativity. Like it, most of what you were telling to me would make most people die from exhaustion, especially the way that. Like you had to guerrilla style make Elemental, and if you haven't seen Elemental, everyone go check out. How do they find it the easiest on YouTube? If they put uh, Jessica Lowndes Elemental, or how's the best way for yeah, them? Yeah, Jessica Lowndes yeah. Elemental. It's on YouTube. There's the 30 minute version, and then there's also individual videos for each element. Mm -hmm. So there's fire, earth, water, air, like air, future, it, yeah. the spirit. It just goes on and on. And I. I just really liked, even with the music as we were writing and as I was healing and going through my own personal journey, it was a blending of genres because it started in one place and ended up somewhere completely different, which is the whole story. And I just wanted to create something that just meant so much to me. And I think that, like you said, like my remedy, if I'm tired or exhausted is to create. Yeah. And then I'm fine. Like I feel so much better and I get energy from it. So it doesn't exhaust me. It's that is my therapy and my, it's so cathartic to me. And I'm so proud of it. And it was such a guerrilla style project. It was self-funded. We shot all seven videos in six days, which was insane, but also just so rewarding. And it was some of my favorite people on the planet coming together to help me accomplish this. And then I got a directing deal out of it which was the goal. So it's perfect. And I got to have an art film for my, my new album. So it's a win-win yeah. all around. Yeah. And it, and it's beautiful and it's, it's so the qual production quality is bonkers. Like it looks like it cost several hundred thousand. And I know you put it together for a very, for not that it didn't cost you a ton to put together, no, but all. you brought, you know, you brought people together who love to create. And when people love to create, they, they, it's, it can just have the synergy. And I think, um, Tell me this: Did 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 you have dreams of singing first or acting first? Like when you were little, little. Take us to little girl Jessica. <laughs> um, I think it was both, but I was always singing. So there's home footage of me as a three year old singing to strangers. Like and one's actually very awkward. Like I, there's this guy that is clearly trying to suntan in Palm Springs. And I'm a three-year-old that goes up and I sit blocking the sun and then I just start singing to him and my dad's filming. So he's trying to be polite because it's on camera, but it's also just really awkward and weird. Um, <laughs> but I had no fear and I would just go up to everyone and be like, do you want to hear me sing? And then I would just start singing. And in that same video footage, I am announcing to my parents that I'm going to move to LA and I'm going to be an actress and a singer. And so I just knew literally from age three that's what I wanted to do. And 
I, I think when I first moved to LA, because I moved when I was 16, I homeschooled my senior year online. And then the day I got my license, I drove down, which was crazy. <laughs> Probably terrifying for my dad, who was my passenger, because I had <laughs> just passed the test. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I insisted on driving, of course, the whole 22 hour drive. But uh, yeah, I think when I was 16, I thought, okay, I'm gonna go to LA. I had done this little demo CD. I went through an I hate men phase that lasted about two weeks with my first little breakup. And I recorded it with my best friend up in Vancouver. And I was like, okay, I have this music, but I'm going to LA. I'm going to just focus on acting, put the little CD in my laptop case, whatever. And one of my first flights back to Vancouver, I sat next to this guy on the plane and we were talking and he loved music. And out of nowhere, I just felt compelled to give him this CD of mine that was literally made on a CD burner with Sharpie. And I had no idea he was a producer of a TV show for CBS. And I get a phone call and he ended up buying one of my songs. It was a song called Goodbye, which when you actually hear my Throwback Thursday album, a lot of people don't know that I was 16. That is my 16-year-old EP, 16-year-old self. And that's how I paid my rent when I first moved to LA. So I was actually selling music, which was just so unexpected. And then... Cut to a year and a half later, I booked 90210 as a singer. That was initially the only thing I had to do in the audition. And it was just, you were just a guest star and then you ended up doing 113 episodes. Is that right? Yeah. You, I, quite, I think it was 120. Yeah, it was huh? quite a few. Yeah. So what did you just, so how, t- explain how that happened. So you were brought in as, did you have any acting in like, obviously for the audition, was there some acting or was it just singing? There were a couple lines, but I was the afterthought because they'd already cast everybody. They'd gone on their tour for months. And then in the 11th hour, our showrunner went and saw Spring Awakening in New York and he fell in love with the musical, went backstage, met the creator and was like, hey, I would love to put this in the show as the high school musical. Is that possible? Like, I think the message is really strong. And he got permission to do that. So all of a sudden they needed a Broadway singer that was for the high school play. And so I came in, I sang and what was so crazy was I had done a pilot with Ryan Murphy right before that, that didn't get picked up. It was for FX and I was pretty devastated by it because it was, it was Ryan Murphy. Ryan Murphy's made like 500 TV shows, right? I know. And some of my favorites. And so I just, filmed this this pilot called Pretty Handsome, which was about a family man who wanted a sex change. And so I think it was like ahead of its time and a little out there and people weren't ready for that yet. And I I played the son's girlfriend who hid my pregnancy and I give birth to the baby at the school dance. So it was pretty intense. And I actually filmed that scene on my 18th birthday, which was wild. Um, That's a little fun fact. (laughs) I have to give birth to a baby. Um, anyways, I guess it was my 19th, it was my 19th birthday. Um, but anyway, my boyfriend was Jonathan Groff, who was on Spring Awakening. And so six months before my audition. Wait, is Jonathan Groff, hold on a second. The singer and actor, and he's amazing. He's incredible. Is he the one that, that from Hamilton that does, you'll be back. He's done everything. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's. Is that who, is he a Broadway singer? He's a Broadway singer. He's incredibly oh, yeah. awesome. So Jonathan Groff made that character of the the in 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 Hamilton of the have you seen Hamilton? Of course. Yes. yes. So is that is that the Jonathan Groff you're talking about? Yeah, I what I'm not sure. I didn't know if he was involved in Hamilton, but he probably was because he does everything and he's so talented. Yeah. But so six months before this 90210 audition even came up, I had worked with him and he had taught me the songs and told me about Spring Awakening. So I all of a sudden knew the song for the audition, like the back of my hand. And so when it came to be, I walked in, knew it, didn't even have to work on it. And to my face, they literally said, hey, we're really sorry, we're looking for a blonde. And I was like, no, I can tie my hair, I can do anything, whatever. And that was that. And so I ended up leaving the same demo CD that I gave to the guy on the plane. And from being 16, I left it on the desk. I left the room. They ended up hiring somebody else 
and cut and I was devastated because at that point I was about to move back to Vancouver didn't know how I was going to pay my rent I had a couple projects that I booked and then work visa issues wasn't able to film so I was like what am I doing like I just need to go back like I just don't think I can stay here and a month and a half later I got a call from the showrunner and he's like I've been listening to your demo CD and I really just feel like you're a better fit for this role can you be down here in a couple hours chop off all your hair and be on set tomorrow and that's what I did. Chop off all your hair? Chopped it all off. Yeah, my hair was to here and I literally, my hair grows fast, it's fine. Yeah, but I was, fine. It, it was pretty, it was like, it was crazy. Like I literally, he's like, I want something that sets you apart. It's going to be a couple episodes. You're going to have like some singing stuff. And so he gave me a Pulp Fiction haircut, like Whoa. full on with Whoa. the bangs. Whoa. And then when I got to set day one, one of the writers had seen my Ryan Murphy pilot and was like, oh my gosh, you can do crying scenes. And ended up writing me in more of a drug addiction and these crazy emotional scenes on the show. And that just kept going throughout the episodes. And even at the end of episode seven, my character dies of a drug overdose, which I was just thrilled to be able to have seven weeks of work. And I'm like, this is awesome. This is great. And then I go to the hair and makeup chair. I, I make everyone cookies. I'm like saying my goodbyes. And then they're like, hey, have you read the next script? And I hadn't, and they brought me back with an adrenaline shot to the chest, <laughs> all fiction style, and I got a series regular contract that day, and it just turned into this whirlwind, and it, it, we shot five seasons and six years of my life, and such a pivotal time. I started when I was 19, ended when I was 25, like almost 25, so it was just, it was amazing, and it mm really was just such an incredible platform and they kept the music throughout all the seasons which was really fun so my character was a country singer and then she was a jazz singer and then she was stealing pop stars music and selling it off as her own and you know to buy her drugs <laughs> yeah, to buy, yeah. <laughs> well, there's always drama following her but yeah and then that's that's now shifted into these rom-coms and and to be able to write them has also been just a huge dream come true and one of the coolest experiences ever well, on well, you and I were. By the way, that's a phenomenal story. I, I'm Thank so you. glad. I'm so, <laughs> I don't know if I even told you that story, but yeah, there you I go. Think, no, whole... you told you told me little pieces of it, but not all yeah. of that. Um, you get to write these rom coms, and what you and I were doing, and you know, much possibly to the chagrin of the actual writers, is you and I were rewriting. Like, and I think that that happens a lot. Like, even if it's a really well written script, yeah. When you're actually with your other uh, uh, actor, what does your cup say? <laughs> Eat cake for breakfast. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, there we go. I just did the tea. <laughs> Last day on earth. Right? I'm, I'm a huge nerd, and a lot of people don't know. I, yeah, I, I do keep signs any chance I can get. And, um, you, and you snort occasionally. I do um, snort. Oh, but it's very few, there's very few people on the planet that can make me snort. Uh -huh. And it's not like, yeah, but I was snorting up a storm in Sudbury. You were, we were, you were snorting. And you know, we, one thing that was so fun about, you know, working with you on this film was that, that, you know, we'd get up early and walk to the coffee shop and sort of like be talking about the scenes and about the day and about, you know, some days we, I mean, some days we would just be, we'd, we'd, we'd be talking about life and then get to the coffee shop and be like, okay, we, we got to remember, we got to focus <laughs> on this. <laughs> couple, this, is, this is so easy to talk to you. I know we had to like rehearse. We had to really rehearse and but you and i were rewriting like there's big chunks where we're like let's just and that's i think like I think probably what makes some, it so what's, yeah. what it just makes it so special because it's us you know and it really yeah. became a part of us and one of my favorite things that we did was i was like okay because uh, we just yeah some of the things just needed a little finessing i was like what would your dream girl say in this moment and then you would tell me and then i'm like well then that's what i should say and then i'm like I was like, what would my dream man say to me in this moment? And then you would say it. And I think that's why it feels so authentic and real and awesome. And it was just so fun. And it was just such a collaborative thing. And yeah, it's such a special movie. I had an absolute blast. I can't wait to do another one. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Another and, and another one. And another. And you get to direct soon. And you're you're always writing. That's something people probably don't know about you is you're always writing you're always creating and it's 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 
I was amazed by your, uh, by your, your, the energy, the amount of creativity and the amount of creational energy that you have. And you're able to kind of like funnel it and actually get it done and, and it not get overwhelmed by it. It seems like it brings you so much joy. Now, does that come from, you shared with me a little bit about your mom and dad and mm -hmm. do, like how much of who you are, do you think is from them? I oh, like, I am so similar to both of them, especially my dad. My dad is a very intense, passionate, driven human, extremely positive. And I think growing up around that positivity is what has made me so positive. And it's yeah. and even when I'm ever having days where I'm doubting myself, I can call him and just get my head of positivity and, and you feel like invincible by the end of talking to him and he's he's incredible like anything he's ever set his mind to he's done from running across Canada he holds the record for that the teenage record um and that was also really funny like he was told when he was a teenager that he wouldn't be able to run again because he had a knee surgery and he's like well I'm gonna run across the country <laughs> he just he just you know, like no one made him do that. He just was like, oh no, I'm I'm going to, I'm gonna run again. I'm gonna run across Canada. You told me that Terry Fox, like their team, even reached out to him for a bit of like a uh, a bit of ideas on how he did right. it. Right? Yeah. So yeah. Terry called him before his run. My dad did it before him um, to get advice, and, and my dad had run it in 81 days, and he did West Coast to East Coast. I know Terry did the opposite, um, but yeah. So it's he's. He's just incredible. And then from there, the guys that sponsored his run came to him and saw how motivated he was. And they're like, hey, we want you to sell one of the first cell phones in Canada. And so he did. And at that time, it came in a box and it cost thousands of dollars and it didn't work for the first 10 months. And he had to try and convince people that this was the technology of tomorrow. So to have somebody like that, that has been so supportive of my dreams no matter how outrageous they are because he knew how outrageous his dreams were was mm -hmm. so instrumental to even me being able to accomplish what I've accomplished so even when I was 16 and wanted to homeschool and then move to LA I thought there'd be a little bit more of a pushback from them but I announced to them that that's what I wanted to do and he's like okay I'll go email your principal and it was so so easy and but he's just, yeah, they're amazing. And, and my mom also is just like very different personality types, like more shy and logical, but it's, she's a pianist and a piano teacher. And I get a lot of my musicality from her and, and my love for music. Cause we had a studio in the basement. And so I would do homework to piano music every single night. And that, yeah. That would explain your pitch. That would explain, why <laughs> that, that explains why I have such great pitch and musicality and yeah that's a, that and now let's just because i don't want to run out of time and not get to the story about your grandmother and that whole could you just dip into it before we just before we before we end i, I really want to hear this new product can you share much about it i can share a little i can yeah. tease it i can yeah, tease, tease it. this is actually tease because this is crazy this is crazy so tease, i tease it yeah, I, this is, I mean, you saw how inspired I am. So I'm always looking for different inspirations for writing projects. And I feel like there's been so much that I've been doing behind the scenes for the last four and a half years. And no one has known the, the amount of work that's gone into it. And it's finally going out into the world. So like when I made Harmony from the Heart, that was a movie that literally took four and a half years to get made. And then it just I birthed it into the world as a little baby. And so I have all these projects slowly happening. I just signed a deal with my writing that I have like more projects in that rom-com space coming out. But I'm trying to think of what's the next four and a half years and what's that next thing I want to work on. And it was pretty wild. I looked up my mom's family on Ancestry.com and my mom's adopted. And there's a lot of questions that we don't have answers to. And I found out that my great grandmother was one of the biggest unsolved murder cases in Vancouver. And so I am diving in and it has been so wild and crazy. And the story just, it gives me goosebumps even talking about it right now. It's just like, whoa. 
Um, but it's been so fun because I'm able to find out all of this family history and where I come from. But then I also am so inspired by it because I want to really do it justice and write about it in a way that I know she would want me to write it. And it's, it's fun. It's, I feel like a, a little Nancy Drew, like I'm going to the places that she used to go to in the thirties. And there's just, there's all of this information and I'm going to libraries and looking up a bunch of information and then police departments. And so I'm, I'm very excited about this one and I don't want to give too much away, but it's a, it is a wild story. And I think people are going to be like, Whoa, this is crazy. Mm. And you want to, do you want to produce, you want to write? And obviously is it a series or is it a movie? Do you not know? It is a mini series. And I want to play her. Yeah. You want to play grandma? You want to play grandma? Great grandma. Yeah. Great. Oh yeah. Great grandma. (laughs) Great grandma. Right, because your your mom your mom's mom was adopted. She was, I yeah. Well, something crazy after her mom died, she was thrown into an orphanage and then adopted by her own sister. So yeah, there's there's a lot there's a lot oh, there. That that's dramatic. Yeah, so it's <laughs> yeah, it is dramatic. But I'll leave all the other okay. insane details out for now. Okay. Just just a little teaser. But I'm very yeah. very excited and inspired. And then speaking of inspired, I'm also very inspired by our project coming out Saturday because yeah. working with Gladys was insane. It was amazing. It was, it was so, true. it was so special too. Like just, you know, she hadn't been in that environment very much and, mm-hmm. and you know, the way we worked with her was unique. And I just remember, you know, because we worked so many hours, uh, I, I, it was a lot know. of hours and we didn't have weekends. We worked through the weekends and then we had one day off, which felt more like a half day off. It was the most, <laughs> by the end of it, I was like, I'm so tired, but I'm also so happy. And the entire thing was medicine for the soul. Cause literally every single person there was made of light and love and everyone, like the whole crew. And like, it's very rare that you have an experience where like everybody, I was touched by everybody and it mm. was such a, such an amazing, amazing gift. And that's why I want to celebrate it and promote it as much as possible. And, and again, like even, even watching this singing scene, the finale song with us singing with Gladys, like it just makes me emotional. Cause I'm like, this is crazy. Like I tell you the story of this 16 year old up in Vancouver before driving down. And it's like, I never thought in a million years I'd be standing on a stage singing with someone that I used to look up to and admire. And it's, yeah seeing it all back you're just like this is so cool and incredible and i hope it affects people and brings them lots of joy and they enjoy it because i had the best time filming it. it's one of my favorites to date yeah and i've never done a movie with this much singing in it you've obviously done movies with lots of singing but like the process where you sort of pre-record and we were lucky we got to sing in real you know we got to sing some of our stuff live and, and not pre-recorded but we had before you know we both were in toronto um was that montreal no toronto in a studio and sort of filming as a backup in case we couldn't get some of it live but then then matching some of it and and working through some of that stuff some one of my favorite scenes is us with the guitar i think sitting on the couch kind of like j- figuring out harmonies um, but that's just because we were doing that back. St- we were doing that off camera the whole time. <laughs> I know that was just that was just us being us. Yeah. And then I also think what was so crazy is that finale scene. We were under the wire to get all of those shots filmed, so we ended up pushing three scenes together. Do you remember this? <laughs> um, where we did them all together, where it was like, oh yeah, after the show. And then it was her coming up and then it was the ending. And we literally, I don't even know how long that take was like 18 minutes. <laughs> Longest take. And it felt that to me felt like we were doing a play and we were actually on a stage in a theater. But the fact that we didn't do the scene separately, we just ran it as one whole, whole shot until the end of the film. That was, that was crazy. And, and, you know, because we rewrit, we had rewritten so much of the little, little, as we're getting to that point, there was a couple of times you had to stop and be like, wait, what did we write here? Wait, what did we write? And then our script supervisor, usually you, when you forget a line, you can call out and ask for their help. But he's like, I don't know. This is whatever you guys came up with. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, I'm so, I'm so proud of it. And I just think, yeah, I just can't wait to do more with you. It's going to be so fun. Maybe I can direct you. Like how cool would that be? That would be, that would be really cool. It'd be really, it would be really awesome too, though, if you were in them, like it's fun, it's fun to, it's fun to act with you. When you're directing, you'll have so much responsibility. You probably won't be able to sing and laugh till you fall over. <laughs> So, can I not do? Yeah, can I, maybe I can do both. I think I can multi. Maybe that's a that's that's quite that's quite You're a like thing. harmonizing with you, telling them what setup I like at the same time. I think that's yeah. I think we can manage that. I, I think it can. I think it could be done. Do you do you know what your next projects are that are coming? I have a few in the pipeline. Um, uh, can you talk? Can you talk about them? So one is a directing job, and uh-huh. then another is a rom com that I think is as of now is shooting over in either Malta or Italy. And I'm very, very, very excited for that. And they're both projects that I wrote. Oh, so wow. yeah, wow. So so I'm I doing don't... that. And then I'm working on my second album. My second album is basically done. It's all done. It's called did Wait. I hear, did I hear? No, any... I haven't played it for you yet. We have to do, we have to do another one of these where we just talk and get caught up. <laughs> And then I'll play you all the sneak peeks and a little bit. Yeah, we could like, because we can share screen and we can share audio and you can play me like a little clip. So when in Christmas Con's coming up and they're, they've they given me like an hour. So they, and then you're, we got to work on it because I want you to come on for a few songs and we'll do, we'll try. Our song from this movie is tricky on the guitar, but we'll see if we can figure it out. Like we'll figure out a version of it. Definitely, Mary, did you know, I really want to hear you sing. Uh, you are my sunshine. Like, and this time I'll like wait for my harmony part. <laughs> yeah, we can and do that. That'll be really, really fun. Um, and so people, if, if if folks watching this, if you don't have your tickets yet to Christmas Con in Jersey, uh, Jess and I, I'm doing a concert on Friday now. It used to be Saturday. You're there Friday, right? I hope so. Because they moved the, they <laughs> Yeah, moved they, the, they moved it. I don't even know. Concert was supposed to be Saturday, but then they, they moved it to Friday. Okay, good to know. Um, yeah, I get there. Yeah, I'm going to be there beforehand. Cool. Um, well, and this is actually my first convention ever. Ever. They're exhausting. Ever. They're exhausting, but the end. Of, <laughs> I'm excited. You should be excited because yeah. it's these people that love your career and followed you. And you'll meet people that have followed you all the way from the very beginning who be like, and they'll tell you. And as exhausting as it is, it's really special to know that your work is touching people at this level and you feel really proud as an artist at these things at the end and and whooped like spanked like spanked because of just the the the, the, the energy yeah and, the and there's gonna be i think five thousand people or it's a lot maybe more there's it's it's wow. very it's very i think it was actually eight it's a lot of people um and so I, i'm excited i'm excited that's short I, that's I, coming I, up shortly we need to practice <laughs> i mean or we don't but no we do we, i mean we would we would just we should we should practice i gotta get our christmas song kind of locked in i'm gonna actually message our writer of the song and see if he can help me come up with simpler chords because they're it's a it's a freakish walk down um and i think it's written too high naturally if as your character is like remember it's not written for your key yeah no it's like <laughs> well then other parts are really low so yeah we yes. can we will we'll we'll be able to change it and fix we need it. to do a zoom like this though where we kind of and I'll set up my mic, yeah. which and then maybe I'll have something behind me. I'm in my new place, by the way, that I bought over FaceTime, <laughs> and I'm still in the process of decorating. So I'm like, it looks like I'm just like in this bare looks, like, looks like a studio, actually. It looks good. It, it does. Looks does it? Okay, it cool. Really... I'm going to have brick walls, and then are I'm you here. stoked? Are you so stoked about yeah. your new place? I just, yeah. So it was pretty wild while we were filming. Day our very first day of filming together, I bought a home. Of- FaceTime on our first <laughs> never thought I would ever do that but my little on dream sight, like, sight oh, unseen sight, sight unseen. unseen and I am the happiest I've just literally since our movie I've just been yeah decorating getting everything all organized and together and and renewing so yeah I'm very 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 happy and excited right. and now this this will be like this is going to be the office um and then this will be where I create that story about my great grandmother and so many others to come. Mm, I love that. I just, I, I love how insp- so you're so much more than a pretty face. And I think like you, people can look at someone who's done work like, like you from 90210 or like singing or, or did you model before? Or did you go right into a- uh, acting? Right into acting. You didn't model. I, no. But, but I was can- always, like back in the day, like I was, I'm five, three and a half. 
<laughs> so it wasn't really like a thing to do. Like I guess I could have done print modeling perhaps. Yeah. First. Um yeah. so I've obviously done modeling though with with press and for acting jobs yeah. and and now I've done it for a bunch of yeah, stuff. But yeah, but people can judge and not uh, by a, like sometimes when people see someone who's beautiful and they'll be like, oh they're life just easy for them but it's so i love i love learning about people that like the the amount of depth and like we didn't even touch on the spiritual side you and i had so many synchronicities with whether it's leonard cohen or some of the, it's just some of the conversations that you and i had about tony robbins priming every morning our daily tony robbins priming and, and and that you do that and the breath work stuff and just like in the taking responsibility and not being a victim. That's one thing people don't realize is how spiritually deep you are. You, and you're like, you're almost like a, not a, what's not, not a medium, but like a, where, you know, that woman worked with you while we were there, even the, we, I found this amazing Thai, this massage woman and your, your ability to tap into the, the other realms and dimensions. Like you actually have a gift, like you have a spiritual gift of, I don't know if they call it discernment or divination or something but there's there's this whole part of you that people don't really know which is you're connected to not just as an empath like you feel and you like it matters to you how people perceive like you but also like how their their experience because like, you know it's uh, being a director and a producer and a writer there's a lot of people that you're working with and i think one of your one of the coolest things was w working with you was some of our conversations about I feel that the things that really matter, which is the things that are going to last forever. Like all this is meaningless and it's yeah. cool that it's so cool. We're telling stories and these stories inspire people and hopefully get them connected in some way to themselves or to God or to each other. But then there's this other part of you that's really special and that's really deep is your spiritual side. And I, I got to experience that. And I think that people feel that through your writing and you're producing and maybe through through your directing but also i think this project with your about your great grandmother there might be some of that specialness get to come through of that because it's so mystical and so cool thank you thank yeah. you so much i know we we should just do another podcast dedicated strictly to <laughs> spirituality we have so much to unpack and talk about that would just be that'd be cool like some of our conversations that we had while we were there yeah. If we could do another one of these, that would be Yeah, really and awesome. understanding Jesus too, because I think you're you have a relationship to God and to Jesus, and and I do. And and it's I find it really fascinating to speak with people who because because we assume that if somebody calls himself a Christian or someone calls himself a Buddhist or whatever, that they believe the same thing. But there's mm -hmm. like your experience of who Jesus is and mine is so different. And I love to actually love talking about the the similarities but also the differences in that and doing it in a way that's compassionate because there's people are so divided by religion that i like actually celebrating the differences in, in your experience of who god is and my experience of who god is 100 right that's why we're so aligned i know <laughs> yeah and and so i'm so this movie comes out on the 26th i think it's seven o'clock central is that right you know, I believe it's 8 p.m. Eastern. So yeah, I guess. Well, that would be five uh, Pacific. What I mean, I'm like, what is that so, Central? I'm Pacific, so it, it might be seven. Sorry, it might be seven Central. They did something where. Oh, eight seven Central kind of thing. I think. Oh, oh this is something we should probably know. I'll I'll put it in the show notes. It's okay. okay. I'll put it in the show notes and in the the outro when I'm like you know when I share about what we talked about a bit, but. Um, where can people find you and follow you if people want to stay super connected to what you're doing uh, as well? I'm on Instagram, which is just my name, Jessica Lowndes, with the D, not Lowndes, Lowndes, but with the D. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then I have Twitter, which is also my name, Facebook, which is my name with my middle initial. And then YouTube, it's just Lowndes Official, and that's where all of my music stuff is. And all of the elemental yeah. short films. So yeah. yeah. I really want people to watch elemental uh, and I really want people to watch our film um, on the 26th. And so if you, uh, if you, you can go to my website too, paulgreen.com and there's a schedule of when it's airing and where you can find it, how you can get GAF in the app, GAC. If you want to be able to watch it on the app, you can watch it through friendly. There's a lot of ways to watch it. And um, my website yeah, has a lot of Hulu as well. That, say Saturday. that what, what? It will be on Hulu as well. That's right. So when you get to Lou, it'll be there on Saturday. That's that's so exciting. Well, hey, you thank you for 
coming um, on Thanks. the ground. This on is so much. Even, even though this was an hour, it wasn't long enough. Like this is so great. This I know. There's so, so much. I wanted. There's so many questions I had. Out, I know. For you, um, but, but this is awesome. Thank you so much. And yeah, I can't wait to do this again. And we we really do need to practice our songs for Christmas Con. <laughs> That'll be our next our next thing. And then I'll get. That's the same mic I have, right? Is that the same? One? One? Yeah. The yeah. The the seven B. So, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. So I gotta the, get. Um, SM7B, yeah. I'm gonna get the same setup and fix. Like literally, right before this, I set up the new the webcam in here. The I got a new monitor, so I'm ready. I'm ready to You're go. Ready. You're ready. Yeah. These are yeah. I have a bunch of these today. Once we hang up, I think I have six more. I've done five this morning just to promote. I'm mm -hmm. glad it's Christmas, and I have a couple other projects that I'm talking about. But I really, I'm glad I could sandwich you in. I was worried. I was concerned because the movie comes out in three stinking days and and I'm going to put this up right away as a podcast and a video at the same time. Um, and I'm excited for people to see, to, to, to enjoy this. Um, and I really do want to have you on so we can maybe dive deeper into some of the music creation. And I think what would be a fun episode to do with you on the grass is greener, which is the podcast is share screens and you share little bits of elemental, but also share this new album, like a little teasers and, um, and We'll we'll make that happen. Okay, perfect. Awesome. All right. Well, it's so nice seeing your face, and yeah, have the best day doing interviews and yeah, and yeah. Let's uh, let's get some music. Christmas Carol practicing. In. Oh yeah, we gotta practice. All right, we have to practice. Don't, don't go anywhere. I'm gonna hang. I'm gonna end the recording. I'm gonna say goodbye to you. Thank okay. you everybody for stopping by. Make sure you check out Jessica and all of her amazing work and so many cool projects coming from her that you're not gonna even believe. All right, bye. So thank you so much for stopping in and uh, listening to the episode and watching it here. Uh, Happy Thanksgiving. Please subscribe here on YouTube, but also over on Apple iTunes and leave a review and rate and all that stuff. It makes a big difference. Also, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for watching our movie, which is out on the 26th on JAF. And also, if you could, um, you can also go to paulgreen.com for all the things and have a peek at my sponsors in the show notes. All right. You have a great Thanksgiving and I'm thankful for you. Bye.